In this video, we're going to walk through using Eclipse, which is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And it's the application we're going to use to create Java programs. So you can go to the Start menu, and perhaps Eclipse is installed on your computer, and it may be there. Um, on mine, I type the word Eclipse, and then I find it here in Programs. As soon as Eclipse opens, it's going to ask you about a workspace. So if you're using a shared computer, you would need to be using a workspace that's uniquely yours. I'm the only one here, and so the workspace I'm using is in the teacher folder, and it's just called workspace. But if you're, again, if you're sharing this computer with multiple students, uh, you want to have a workspace that's named uh, for you. I'm going to say OK. And because this is my first time opening Eclipse, it's going to give me all the same menus that you will get the first time you use Eclipse. Be patient as it loads, and once it does, I recommend you maximize it so you can have all of the space available on your screen. Along the left-hand side, you may see a little J. If you click that, that little J, it's for Java, and it opens the Package Explorer. You click it once, open, and click it again to close. Now, there's this welcome screen. I'm going to close that. It's like a tab in a browser. Just close it with an X. And now, see how that Package Explorer, Explorer expands and takes up the rest of your screen? If your Package Explorer does not expand, click on that little J to the left after closing your tab. Now, Eclipse is a professional environment. It is designed to help real-world coders create the software that we use daily. It has, it has a lot of buttons. We're just getting started, so we don't need all the buttons. So if on the right-hand side, you can find Task List, click the X and close that. If you find Outline, click the X and close that. So we're going to have a, a sort of a slimmed down screen. The first app that most people create when they, when they create a new program is called the Hello World program. So go to File, choose New, and then there are a bunch of different kinds of things we can create, but the thing that we want to make is a Java project. This wizard is going to interview you and ask you several questions about your Java project. I'm going to call mine Hello World with a capital H, a capital W, and no spaces. All of the rest of this stuff appears to be right. If, if you notice that yours says use default JRE unknown, if your JRE is unknown, then you need to work with your on-site teacher to get your Eclipse configured so that you will be able to run Java programs. But I'm just leave all the rest of these together and then say next. and then say finish. Now what you have on the left under Package Explorer is a folder for your project. If you open that with a little triangle, you see there's uh, some, some stuff underneath there. We'll go over what that means in a bit. I want you to right click on your project name. Right click on Hello World and go to New and we want to make a class. Every program in Java which is the language we're going to learn in this class, is every program in Java it consists of classes. Just like every person in the world is, is contained within their skin, and you have all the organs and all of the everything that's inside your body. In Java, everything that's part of a program is contained inside a class. So think of your class as the skin that holds your program together. So we're going to name this class Program with a big P. We're going to be using program with a big P as the name of our classes that will be runnable so that we can tell which ones are programs that we're running and which ones are other kinds of classes that are helpers that are make our programs better. There's this checkbox here under which method stubs would you like to create? Check the top box that says public static void main string brackety thing args. Once you check that box, say finish. Now make sure you check that box because if you don't you have to start over. It's going to run through the wizard, and then it's going to think for a bit, and then it's going to show you your program here in the biggest part of your screen. Your screen should show on the left-hand side your project name, a source folder, SRC is source, a package, and then within that package should be your program with a big p.java. On the right-hand side, we can see in that program file, and we have our lines numbered. That's convenient. Um, it's in there's a to do section to do auto generated method stub so right here under to do click your mouse and that's where we're going to be typing our first line of java code 
Now, on line 6 is a blank space. On line 7, there is a curly brace. And we're going to find that curly braces will become very important to us in this course. Um, and you need to pay very careful attention to them. If you double click to the right of this curly brace, it highlights all the way up to the other curly brace that's just above it. Similarly, if you double click to the left of this top curly brace, it highlights all the way down and it puts the cursor next to that other one. So these curly braces travel in pairs and they form boundaries. Like I said that the class is the skin that holds in the app. These curly braces are containers themselves. So you need to be careful when, you, when, when you're clicking that you don't click outside this curly brace. You don't want to type here, not here. Um, in fact, if you do type there, you're probably going to wind up seeing a red mark, and there it goes. As you type Java in, in, in your IDE in Eclipse, it's constantly looking at what you've typed to make sure you haven't made any errors. It's going to, be try, it's going to try to be very helpful. And so this red mark, if you hover your mouse over it, will give you an, a hint about what's the matter. And it, it, it's giving me errors because what we've typed is not Java code at all. So I'm going to erase that, put my mouse cursor on line 6 here, and if, if you have other lines, it may not be line number six, but it's the line right after this to do and before that curly brace. And then I'm going to scoot over with the tab key. It's important that we keep programs lined up. Uh, we'll, we'll get to know a little bit more about, about this indentation as we go along. But let's, let's type um, the, the code that makes things display on the screen. It's going to be kind of weird, and we don't know why you have to capitalize certain parts, but just, just follow along. System with a big S dot which is your period key out dot print ln and if you have system dot out dot print ln then you need to have two parentheses after it and a semicolon if you get all that typed it should give you no red marks system with a big S dot out dot print ln open paren close paren semicolon if I were to run this program it would print absolutely nothing. But if I come between those parentheses and put in a number like 65, then if I were to run that program it would print out to my screen 65. So how do we run a program? If everything is configured right in your Eclipse you should be able to find this play button. It's the run button. It's on the toolbar up here and if you're missing a toolbar you can go to window show toolbars and uh, mine would be hide toolbar of course but if it's missing you just go to show toolbar and then you hit your play button. Now it says you need to save your file. Okay. And now at the bottom we have this thing called console. This con we, we were on the problems tab, but now the console popped up. And so now we can see down here that it says 65. What if you wanted to say your name? I'm going to pause right here, and I want you to try to change the program so that instead of saying 65, it'll say your first name. So if you haven't already, go ahead and try that. If you did, did you get it right? Did you get any errors? Um, some of you may have typed your name, like my, my name is Moix. So if I type Moix there, and then I hit the play button, it's going to say, oh, you need to save, and I've saved. And then it's going to say, oh, man, you have errors. And if you proceed, it's going to give you, oh, like, it's going to spit out errors. So there's this red mark here that says Moix cannot be resolved to a variable, whatever that means. Well, the problem is that if you want to print out words in Java, those words have to be enclosed in double quotes, kind of like a, a, a quote in a sentence. And once you put quotes, which are uh, on the apostrophe key, you hit shift and apostrophe, once you put quotes around each side of your name, your red mark goes away. When you hit play and you save it, and then what you type comes out. So this is our Hello World program. We traditionally would say something like Hello World, Hello World, Command S saves. Um, control S if you're on Windows, and then your play button, and now it says hello world. So you can print anything that you know how to print in Java using just this. So now that you know how to print one line of text, can you make a haiku that consists of three lines of text? You can make a haiku about anything that's school appropriate. Um, curly braces rock, curly braces, rock. Um, there, there's my first line of, of it. Um, that's five, five. So curly braces, rock. And then I would use three of these print line statements, one after the other. So I'm going to leave you to that to get you a, a haiku made. 
And if you have any troubles with, with bugs or errors or Java, make sure you've got your quotes matched up, your parentheses matched up, make sure you put a semicolon at the end of each one of these lines, and that you don't type on the wrong side of the curly braces. If you have any more problems, talk to your on-site teacher, and if they can't get you fixed up, we'll, we'll certainly work it from my end.